Hello and welcome to this module, Further Statistics for Health Science Researchers. This is actually a module covering two different module codes. HAR6045 is a version of the module for face-to-face -face students, whereas HAR6061 is a version for distance learning students. In subsequent weeks, I may refer to the module just as HAR6045, but as all times, it covers both versions of the module. This module is designed as a way of furthering the knowledge of students who have had some introductory statistical training, such as for Masters in Public Health students, HAR6035 or HAR6042. However, it is designed to help you use the stats in a more practical way, in particular by using the software SPSS. There is a wide range of students taking this module, however. As well as face-to-face -face students, we have distance learning students, we have students on the Masters in Public Health, on the Masters in Clinical Research, we have students from other Masters courses within Shah and elsewhere in the university, we have PhD students, and we also have continuing development, continuing professional development students. So you may be one of several people doing your particular area of work However, there are likely to be other people on the course who are doing slightly different types of work. And so the examples that I will include will try to be relatively broad in their remit. So by the end of this module, the idea is that you should understand more fully the fundamental concepts and methods that are used in statistics by health science researchers generally. It can't cover everything that is done, but certainly all the fundamental principles and the main types of analysis will be covered. As well as teaching these in lectures, you'll be using SPSS to analyse data sets in this way. I'll say more about the tutorials in a moment, uh, but in addition to the actual analysis you'll be doing, you'll need to be able to apply the concepts you learn so that you can critically appraise research studies published in the literature so that, for example, you can understand what different techniques are used for, you can work out whether or not they were appropriate, whether the conclusions are justified, and so on. And finally, I'll also be talking about how to present research findings. Um, particularly in later weeks, we'll do this for particular techniques, and in the final week, I will give you some overall good guidance about this. However, you'll have the opportunity to try this out for yourself via the assessment. And I'll say more about the assignment in just a moment. Just a few comments about how the module will be structured. This primarily applies to those students who are doing the face-to-face -face version of it, but of course, the same material will be available for distance learning students to look at this information in your own time. There are 12 weeks. In the first week, which is this particular session, we'll be having a general introduction and revision lecture. The idea is that we won't introduce much new material today, but hopefully it will get everyone back up to speed and familiar with the terminology that you will have learnt previously. In week two, there will be an introduction to SPSS. This will be a practical session for those face-to-face -face students in which I will demonstrate different properties of using SPSS, and you will be able to follow this for yourself and try some exercises. For the distance learning students, there will be a series of videos in which I demonstrate this, and after each, you'll be able to try out the same for yourself on your own computers. Then for weeks 3 through to 12, each week will have a lecture followed by a practical tutorial exercise. The lectures will all be videoed and these are available for you to watch on Mole for the distance learning students or indeed for the face-to-face -face students who want to catch up on anything. The SPSS practicals will happen in the Portobello Centre IT room, which is where the lectures will also happen for the face-to-face -face students. But whether you're a face-to-face -face 
or a distance learning student, you'll be able to follow some detailed notes which are provided for each week. And these will help you understand how you can put into practice in SPSS the techniques covered in the lecture. Now the module will be assessed with an assignment which is due in by Monday the 8th of June. And this will involve writing a report of up to 2,000 words about the analysis of a data set which will be provided. And along with this particular data set, there will be a set of research questions which will be given for you to answer, but not the precise analysis methods which are required for those. Part of the challenge will be for you to deduce what is the best method of analysis to answer these research questions. A suggested structure for the report is given also along with this, and the assessment itself and all details, including the data set, will be posted up on Mole shortly. It's probably also worth just saying a word or two about myself. I mentioned my name is Jeremy Dawson. Uh, I am a statistician, but I am based 50% in the School of Health and Related Research and 50% in the Management School. So I work across two departments. I have two offices. My office in Shah is 3016, but at least half the week you probably won't find me in there because I'll be at the Management School. So. Um, if you want to get in touch, it's definitely best to email me first. If you're wondering why there's a picture of me playing the cello in a slightly strange, rocky place, um, well, I'm not going to go into that now, but if you want to know more, then have a look at extremecello.com and you'll find out. Now, the last thing I want to say in this introductory chunk is that throughout today's lecture, I'll be referring once or twice, uh, as well as in some future weeks, to a study uh, that I read about, first of all, on the BBC website last year, a study linking the diet of red meat with various health outcomes. The study headline that we saw on the BBC website Red meat increases death, cancer and heart risk, says study. That was enough to make me more interested and want to read more about it. So you can see from this that there was a bit more detail provided. However, in order to get the full details of the study, it's necessary to have a look at the... This is the paper by Pan and colleagues, published in the Archives of Internal Medicine in 2012. And in this abstract, we can see a lot more information about the study. The paper itself is available on the Mole site, so it's well worth having a look at that. As I say, I'll be referring to this once or twice um, throughout the module, and so it's not a bad idea to have some familiarity with it. At least reading the abstracts would be a good idea at this point. Anyway, that's the conclusion of this introductory part. In the next segment, we'll look at describing and summarising data.